Hi, I'm Travis and this is Curious Tangents and today we're doing a Q&A and Loki from my Patreon page asked, what is your favorite book, fiction or non-fiction? And although that's kind of a difficult question, the answer is probably Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari because I bring it up at least once per new conversation, which is probably why my conversations go so strangely, but it's such a good book. I found in life there are books that kind of give you slightly more information toward the subject that you already knew something about. And then there are books that change the context of that thing that you thought you knew about. And this book was that for me with human history. Highly recommend it. I'd like to add from this point on, I'm really sorry if I don't say your YouTube username properly. <sighs> that being said, Oliver Ryuk asked, what is your favorite molecular solid? Metallic. Gaginator asked, how important, no, even better, how efficient and necessary is formal education? And that's a complicated question. That, depend, that depends on your occupational and life goals. For instance, if you say want to be a school teacher, then you need a formal education. There just isn't a way around it as of right now. Or a doctor or a nurse or some profession like that a formal education is incredibly valuable because it's necessary to achieve your dreams and so you should do it. If your career goal in life is something like making as much money as possible, then there are other avenues that do not involve formal education, although people who have formal educations do tend to make more money than people who do not. I believe there's another good part of edu- I believe there's another really good facet of education that rarely gets promoted and that's that education kind of feeds your curiosity about the world, though not always in a formal setting, which I like that you made the distinction between formal and informal education. In terms of what you need to be personally successful, formal education may not be the most important thing in the world, but the world needs people who are formally educated to run itself. Great question. Will Draxler asked, are there any topics or subjects that you want to explore in a video but never will because they won't fit the topic of your channel? That is also a really good question. And yes, but I wouldn't say never. For instance, I have this super huge passion about city planning that I never talk about and probably seems odd if you look at the content on this channel and then hear that I want to be a city planner. But city planning is so cool. And there's probably a way to make that fit with the ideas in this channel. I kind of have a brand of psychology on this channel, which I don't really want. Although I really love psychology, there's hundreds of things that I want to explain and talk about here, uh, city planning being one of them. I do think that an explanatory video on how cities are planned and the relationship of city planning to say the human mind and why we find certain types of architecture so appealing and other types so droll would be really interesting. I also really want to make a video called Is Race Real? that goes over kind of the genetic aspects of race and how society came to categorize people the way that society categorizes people and kind of debunking a lot of beliefs that people oftentimes don't question at all. But I'm also kind of torn because I'm not sure if anyone wants to hear me say that. So I don't know if that video will ever get made, but that's probably it. Architecture Man asked, what do you think is the greatest threat to humanity? And then a random dude responded, the other half of 2020, which is a better response than I can give you. However, I will say that climate change is pretty threatening. Though I don't believe that climate change is a threat above human ingenuity, meaning that I do think humanity could overcome this if we really put our minds to it. Jameson Maori asked, why did you become a YouTuber? This has kind of been my dream since I was a little kid watching Vsauce every day. This has kind of been my look. This has kind of been my dream since I was a little kid watching Vsauce and like nerd fight here. This has kind of been my dream since I was a little kid watching Vsauce and Veritasium and Vlogbrothers and channels that strangely all start with Vs. But I always wanted to be the person who does this and work in science communications. And now I kind of am, though this isn't really my job. 
I do it. Rachel B asked, do you think having a college education is as important as our society makes it out to be? Or should we put more emphasis on trade schools and independent studies? I definitely think that we understate and even shame things like trade school, even though trades are an obviously necessary part of our society. Independent studies I'm pretty passionate about because I do a lot of independent studies myself, and I must say it's incredibly easy to independently study the wrong things. So I think that you should be incredibly careful on that end. Uh, they're very useful and you should definitely like explore curiosities to the fullest extent that you can, but always be careful to like cite your sources and know who you're getting the information from and know how that information was obtained. And B asked favorite books or authors. As I said before, you've all know a Harari and Sapiens, but also The Righteous Mind Why Good People Are Divided on Religion and Politics is a great book and 100 Years of Solitude. Also, anything written by John Green, but you probably all already know that. There is also a book called Range by David Epstein, and if you feel like you're lost in life or like you just like too many things to ever pick one thing, I highly recommend reading that book because wow it made me feel better about not having one thing that i want to specialize in four brothers films asked do you watch your viewers content and if so who do you watch the most so you guys probably know who dr nemo is but if you don't i watch his content link to that in the description if you guys have content that you want me to watch comment it below or link to it in my email or something but yeah i'll watch anything you send me but i haven't seen a lot Daniel Jacobs asked, what is your second favorite space rock? It can be anywhere in the universe. This is going to be probably the most basic answer I can give you, but the moon. However, my third favorite is HD 149026B. It absorbs almost all of the heat from its star, yet emits next to no light. Ergo, it being one of the hottest planets we know of. Iron Cheater 101 asked, what is your favorite part about making videos? Probably when people say that they learned something interesting or that I'm underrated. I really love it when someone comments that they learned something new. Like in my genetics video, someone commented that I was the first place that they heard about an emergent trait, which is crazy because that person was apparently a genetics major. And I really love moments like that. Like, I love that I get to just explore things. Like, this isn't my job and I'm not monetized yet, but like the potential that someday my job will be to just explain topics is such a beautiful realization. Kiki Van asked, what was my favorite video to make and why? It's a split between my second video on this channel, What is a Person Worth? And a more recent video, Where Does Language Come From? On what is a person worth, it's because it was just so easy to make. Though I'm not really teaching in that video, I'm just kind of going through a bunch of random topics. But it was fun to learn those random topics and then explain them. It was also in the beginning of this channel, so I felt really proud of that. On where does language come from, I feel like that was put together in a rather unique way in that, like, I don't know, I feel like it was a valuable listen. Like, I actually have some pride in that one. Joel H. asked, probably the only question that I won't be able to answer, which was, who is your favorite teacher you've ever had and why? And I can't answer it because I've had lots of good teachers throughout my life. And I'm sure some of them watch this, so I'm not going to pick a favorite. Birds Wild asked, hey, remember when you said that Vsauce was your main inspiration for the content you create? If you could do a collab with Michael or any other channel for that matter, what would the video be about? If working with Michael or Kevin or Jake from Vsauce was an option, I would probably pass out. God, but in terms of picking a topic, that's really difficult. Like maybe something to do with interstellar travel would be cool or the creation of a Dyson Sphere. <sighs> I was reading a book the other day and they went over how if humanity say gained the ability to terraform Mars, they would also be able to terraform Earth. And if you can terraform Earth, then you can essentially fight climate change. Rather than simply not pumping more carbon into the atmosphere, we can take the carbon out of the atmosphere. 
And I think a video on that would be really impactful. So probably the re-terrification of Earth. CyanCat123 asked, how old am I? And what inspired you to start a YouTube channel? And then they guessed that it's Vsauce, which is correct. And I'm 21. When I would come home from school as like a middle schooler, I would like run home and I'd watch Vsauce videos after like getting my regular education. And I would be so excited to watch these Vsauce videos every single day. And I would literally memorize the scripts to them. And sometimes I would go back to school and, and occasionally when the teacher asked something, I would recite something that Michael said and the teacher would just be blown away. And that was such a great experience for me. And ever since then, I've wanted to do that for someone else. Imarof asked, do you think that humanity will ever leave the solar system? If so, when? When, I have absolutely no idea. But I do think that we can and probably will do it. Baconator asked, how curious were you before creating this channel? Was this channel an excuse or an outlet for learning about all of these things? Or did you learn them while making the videos? Um, both. I started this because as an 11 year old, this was my dream job. And I figured I just kind of work at a bank right now. I might as well pursue things that I dream about constantly. And I was always a pretty curious person, but nowadays when I'm curious, I think how deep does that go and how can I fit it into YouTube, which is different. Goatee asked, why do people have insomnia? A lot of reasons, but typically stress. Unreal World asked, what is your favorite novel? Good question, I don't know right off. I've read far more nonfiction books than I have fiction books. Um, right off hand, How to Fight a Hydra comes to mind as something I've reread over and over. Daniel W asked, how did the name Curious Tangents come about? The original name for this channel was going to be Epicurious, as in above curiosity. But there's actually a cooking channel with that same name on YouTube and if I ever got big I didn't want there to be a ton of confusion. And so I started looking at other avenues and I thought I really wanted to have a tangentile style of video. Like videos that start off about one topic and then go far deeper into a semi-related topic. And so I came up with the idea Curious Tangents. I later had the idea to make the word curious at a tangent to a circle, which I thought would just be the coolest logo ever, which is why it's all over the channel and everything else I do. Xander McGrady asked, how has your day been? Filled with anxiety and failure, actually, but pretty good all things considered. Elena Morales asked, thoughts on the Stoicism versus Epicureanism debate. I have read philosophy books on Stoicism and I'm gonna admit, I had to Google what Epicureanism was before answering this question, but if I'm going to pick a side, which I hate doing, it would be Stoicism. R. Echo 20 asked, do you play video games? And if so, what is your favorite? I am in fact a Pokemon master, or I used to be. I haven't played video games in a really long time, though I will occasionally play Pokemon Showdown. Uh, other than that, Legend of Zelda is amazing. I'm a big Nintendo fan, but only because they're superior to the other systems in every way imaginable. That being said, uh, Legend of Zelda, Mario Karts, things like that, I excel in. A random dude asked, do you watch anime and what do you like to do in your free time? I do really like anime. I pretty much never have time to watch it these days, so it's become more of a childhood joy. But growing up, there was Naruto, Dragon Ball. Uh, Death Note is an amazing anime. Uh, and recently I watched the movie, A Silent Voice which was so good. But typically the only form of entertainment I use is YouTube because I can justify it because it feels easily justifiable. What do you like to do in your free time? Make YouTube videos. Joe Campbell asked, was there a specific topic that you started researching that made you want to make a YouTube channel? Not necessarily, although it did take me an entire month to make the first video that you'll see on my channel titled who are you? Roughly nine months ago, I got a phone call in the middle of the night from my friend Madison 
asking me to explain a data manipulation that frequently happened in mental health medications because she was trying to explain it to one of her friends at like 2 a.m. to answer this phone call and I happily explained it because I'm always happy to explain things. And it hit me that I should explain things to other people because the person that she was talking to genuinely seemed like they understood it after I said it. And so it hit me that maybe I should explain other things. Ergo, I am now here on YouTube. Jazzy Jazz asked what got you into science and what has inspired you? I think I always kind of had a natural proclivity towards science, um, particularly as a third grader, my nickname was Bill Nye the Science Guy because I would just go on about science to my classmates and to my teachers. And occasionally we would watch Bill Nye the Science Guy videos, I think with the intent of getting me to stop talking. As far as what has inspired me, uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy actually, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Michael Stevens, Hank Green, John Green, many, many other people. If it's a science communicator on YouTube, they probably inspired me. Kelly Brenner asked, do you think that YouTube as an expression for nerds, awkward people, introverted, or just shy people in general has any negatives? As a young content creator who self-identifies as awkward, do you see any negatives in the escape or is it an escape? It's not really an escape. I'm still awkward in real life. I still have like a regular job. I have to go out and talk to people. And even if this was my full time job, I would need to communicate with a team of people who like would do things on the channel and I have to communicate with other people. I definitely don't see this as an escape. I do think that it has made me a bit better at conversation, though. Having 6000 people listen to me talk about science is something that I never really thought would happen and it makes me feel like I'm at least kind of interesting. Or at the very least, I know a few things which are interesting. That being said, I have read a few studies that indicate that children today are more poorly socialized than were their parents, and the blame is shifted onto electronics. I don't think that we have conclusive data, though I will say that I believe the net product of the internet is positive. Ah, Kelly, that was a very nuanced question. I will say I do believe that this is probably the best time to be an introvert in human history. And finally, Doll C asked to do a video on your favorite books from the background. Oh, let's go to the background. So welcome to the background. So I just moved. So not all of the books that are typically in the background are currently in the background. However, Sapiens by Yuval, oh, that's gonna be mirrored. Sapiens, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century by Yuval Noah Harari has inspired a lot of my content and changed the way that I think about the future going forward in a way that's kind of scary, but also mostly interesting. And there's also The 4-Hour Workweek by Timothy Ferris, which I read years ago and changed the way that I thought about the economic system that we live in. It's had a pretty big impact on my life and has changed some of my life goals from what they were initially. But anyway, that's the end of this Q&A. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing and continuing to watch the content that I put out because I really love doing this. And as such, big thank you to everyone on my Patreon new regular video out soon. Thank you. Bye.